registered veterinary surgeon practicing in the UK and this is my YouTube channel. So today I thought I'd talk about how I managed to survive vet school without burning out and how you can too. So the revision techniques I'm going to describe today are the ones that I used during vet school. Um, they got me through, I passed every exam um, and I'm here to live to tell the tales. So um, they're here to give you an idea of what you could do as well. Now really you've got to find what works for you. Um, some of these techniques will work, some won't. Um, if you do find that some of them help, then please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear how you're getting through in vet school. So yeah, I found at uni that my method for revising changed a lot depending on what topic I was um, revising. So I'll just go through a, a few examples now. It really depended on how visual or how theoretical the subject was. So for example, anatomy is very visual. Um, while maybe immunology is a little bit more theoretical. So as I brought up anatomy, let's talk about how I revised that. Um, anatomy mainly happens in first and second year uh, because you're learning what the healthy body is. Each vet school is different, but I'm pretty sure we all cover them, cover anatomy very soon. <laughs> anatomy can seem quite overwhelming because there is a lot to, the, to each body to understand and then you've got every single species as well. Um, it doesn't have to be overwhelming um, if you follow this technique. Firstly, uh, make sure you attend every single dissection um, and you attend all your lectures on anatomy as well. Uh, none of these revision techniques are going to work if you don't know what you're revising. Be a good student. It's also a great time if you're shy like me um, during the practicals to just go and chat to the lecturers if you haven't, haven't understood something during their lectures. Um, or just to clarify a point, um, maybe about a certain type of anatomy. Um, if you don't understand it in the first place, place, it makes it much harder to understand it when you're trying to revise it for an exam. Secondly, draw it out. Just draw it over and over and over again. And I don't mean make it pretty and spend hours on this beautiful poster that you're going to put in your room and never look at again. I know you think you will, but you won't, I promise you. Um, but draw it out, take a biro, draw out a certain part of the body such as the dog's front leg um, and do all the bones and then do all the muscles over it in a different colour. I use different colours of felt tip pens over it. Um, it's going to look messy, it's not going to be pretty in the slightest but it will do the job. It's supposed to be quick. Um, it's a quick process that you repeat over and over again. Um, so maybe you take an evening and you go, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn the forelimb really well. Um, and you do that, you draw the bones, you draw the muscles, you draw where they insert them. You might label them as well, your diagrams, um, but you'll very quickly realize which bits you know for definite are in your head and which bits you don't. And from drawing it out, it's also a really fun way to revise, like, um, you're not just sitting there looking at a textbook and trust me it will stay in your head so much longer if you do it this way. So yeah, um, do this throughout the year, don't just do it just before your exams. Um, I find I did a different body part maybe a couple times a week, so as in I would do like the forelimb on Tuesday, hind limb on a Friday. Um, Maybe the next week I would do the heart and then the lungs. Um, so you don't have to do all the body every week of every species because that's just going to be too much. But as long as you keep up um, and you revise um, steadily throughout the year, it means that when you get to your anatomy exams, they're going to be a lot less intimidating and you're going to feel a lot more confident. So we're going to talk about physiology and subjects like it. Uh, so like physiology, immunology, pathology basically how the body works and then what happens when it goes wrong. These are so important to learn to build on when you start doing different subjects um, clinically um, and, and understanding how disease processes affect the body is really important when you then go and treat them. So for this I mainly found it useful to do group revision um, which might, may sound stressful but it's, it doesn't, really doesn't have to be. Um, 
it, you can sit down with your friends, you can grab a cup of tea, that's what I usually did, a cup of tea, big blanket, um, choose a subject and just ask each other questions, um, take it in turns. As long as you've got the right group of people, they can't be really competitive, um, they can't see it as some kind of one-upping one each other. Um, it's supposed to be a friendly, relaxed way to to socialise with your friends, but also to revise some really heavy topics. It's going to stick in your head a lot better if you both un explain it to someone, that's apparently the best way to revise. Um, and if someone explains it to you, you might have you might have a different way of looking at it and maybe their way is better or worse, you can help each other. Um, and it just means that you're not sat at your desk really trying to concentrate on one piece of paper, just rote learning over and over again. Um, it doesn't stay, there's no point in it, you're just wasting time. Um, that's fine to do before you do your group revision, but don't rely on just sitting at your desk reading it over and over again. And then secondly, um, another thing I found useful for especially the basic physiology and immunology, um, a lot of the things that can apply to both human and veterinary medicine, those kind of subjects, um, YouTube videos and osmosis. So um, I watched a lot of Khan Academy in my first couple of years. Um, this is a free YouTube video series um, that do a lot on physiology and they explain it so well. Um, I, yeah, I remember watching a few of those before my exams and it definitely helped. Um, Osmosis is another site. Um, you get to watch a few of them free before it says you have to pay for a subscription. If you do, that's up to you. I never did. Um, I found that the amount of free videos I could watch um, was enough for a day um, for that aspect of my revision. Um, and these these are really good. These are for you know medical students, so it is human based, but a lot of the physiology is the same. Um, a lot of how the liver works or how the heart works are exactly the same. So I would definitely recommend them. So my next subject would be parasitology. This one is a subject that every second year, at least at my uni, um, dreaded uh, because there's usually like 50 to 100 parasites and some of them you'll never hear about again. Um, others are super important but there's so much to remember for each parasite and they're all slightly different um, that it can be really overwhelming. Firstly, just remember you will get through it we all have to do it. We all feel overwhelmed by parasitology. You're not the first one and you won't be the last. You pick the five most common parasites and bacteria and viruses in each species and just learn those really well. Um, they're the ones they're most likely to test you on and they're the ones you're actually going to need in practice. Don't try to cram parasites last minute. If you are a um, serial procrastinator and you are a crammer for exams, then parasites will be the hill you die on a parasite, bacteria, a pathogen of some sort um, is rare in your country or not endemic, um, for example rabies in the UK, um, only learn it if it's notifiable because those are really important otherwise you don't really need to know it unless you're planning to do conservation work abroad or you're planning to move country. So for parasitology flashcards are actually quite useful, it's a quick way to go through a lot of information um, that can either be quite hard to digest. So next is clinical topics, usually in third and fourth year um, suddenly you're being hit with all these cardiology, nephrology, neurology, all the ologies and it suddenly feels like a little bit much because you're just going through every disease, how to find it, how to treat it um, and you're just repeating that process with every single disease they can think of. So I found firstly that your placements are going to be the most useful here, I'm afraid to say. Um, you're going to see the most common presentations, uh, the most common treatments, you can talk to the vets about these disorders while you're there. Um, it's a really good way to remember them because um, usually a case will stick in your head and that's how you'll remember that particular disease and what you did with it. For example, I am not a horsey vet in the slightest. I was very glad to never see another horse again when I finished, um, 
not literally, I do actually like horses, but I didn't want to be an equine vet. And I never truly understood colic, which sounds crazy now, um, until about halfway through fifth year when I did a equine placement. Um, I'd actually thought of cancelling the placement because I didn't want to do horses, but it was actually really useful and I definitely wouldn't have passed my exams without doing that placement. So um, I would recommend doing uh, experience in other species, not just the one you plan to work in, as tempting as it is. useful to do while you're on these placements is um, when the vet is seeing a patient, um, try to run through in your head what you would do next. Uh, you'll often reach a point where you get stuck and you're like, oh, I don't actually know how I would do that particular procedure or I don't know what test I'd run next and that kind of tells you which bit of your knowledge is lacking um, and then you can go revise that bit and it will feel more important um, and so you're more likely to remember it because you're revising it because you, you know that if you had to be a vet there and then um, you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have managed to treat that patient. Another thing you can do is find cases online. Um, there's a Facebook group called Vet Wings, which has posted a lot of cases from well, real cases, anonymised, um, from real vets and how they then work through the case. And that gives you an opportunity to revise in a clinical context, which is so useful. Another good question to ask while you're revising and while you're sat in lectures is what would I do in this case if the client had limited um, financial resources or wasn't able to give these tablets or um, the cat was feral and you, you can't put eye drops in it four times a day. Um, these are very real questions that you have to ask yourself in practice and while you're revising it'll, be, it'll make it a bit more interesting um, and it'll make you think creatively about problems um, before you have to when you're in practice and that's a really useful skill to have. Hopefully that's helped and alleviated some of the stress that revising at vet school brings. Um, I want to remind you that um, at least in the UK you only need 50%. I've said it in a video before but I, I mean it. Um, don't stress yourself out and also remember that we've all been through it too. We've all felt incredibly overwhelmed at vet school. Um, and struggled a lot and we still make it out the other end and we still end up good vets so you're going to be fine trust the process um, engage with your lectures and dissections and you'll be fine